Welcome back to the channel, guys. Have you guys ever made a mess trying to remove Dynamat out of your car? Today, we're gonna to show you the easiest, most effective, and best way to do that. Most people, and I don't know why you always do this, go and try to use heat to remove Dynamat. Well, what is Dynamat? Dynamat is a tar-based sound deadener that they put in street rods to eliminate rattles, whether it be from road noise, a stereo system that they have inside. It makes everything nice and quiet. But the pros and cons to it is, Dynamat has an aluminum sheathing that's on the top of the tar-based material, and in order to remove it, if you were to use heat, what it does is it melts down into the metal and it actually adheres more than if you have, for this case, Dynamat that is put over undercoating that was not prepped well. So we're gonna dive into our method, which is gonna be dry ice and alcohol. So what some of the things that you're gonna need to do this project is we use, we're gonna grab some dry ice blocks that we got at your local grocery store. Um, some places sell it in pellets and I could see that being easier to break up. You're going to be mixing it with a 70% isopropyl alcohol and this can be found whether it be on Amazon, whether it be at your local grocery store, your Walgreens, CVS, you name it. You can get this stuff everywhere. You're going to be using approximately 32 ounces per, I think it's an eight pound brick of dry ice. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in a small ice chest and we're going to break it up with a sledgehammer. Some of the safety things that you definitely need and ask me how I know, well, the first time we tried to do this, I didn't have safety glasses on and this stuff, what it does is instead of heating it to where it melts in, it actually freezes it to like a block of ice to the point where it will just chip and break right out. The only thing that you'll have to tear is the aluminum sheathing of the Dynamat. So, you're gonna want gloves because this is extremely cold and it will, you will get frostbite in your skin and your hands. So make sure you have, I would even use a thicker glove if you have it like a welding glove. For what I've done this is enough times, I can get away with this, but I do recommend a thicker glove. You are going to need some chisels uh, and a hammer that you can kind of smack it around and get it chipped off the floor. But ultimately we are going to try to strive for doing one of these per brick to start off. We're gonna chip it up with the sledgehammer and you kind of want this to about the snow, uh, like melted snow consistency. That way it lays down over the Dynamat nice and flat. And even if you have it real chunky, it's not quite biting into a flat surface. So keep in mind, if your car has Dynamat maybe in the roof, you might have to put your car on a rotisserie and flip it upside down. That's what we've had to do. We actually thought this car had it and it doesn't have it in the roof, so we got lucky. Moving forward, you're gonna want a little cup of some kind that you can take it from your ice chest and dump it in. And we're gonna basically pat this snow uh, down into this with the dry ice. And we're gonna let that sit for 30 seconds or so until it freezes. So let's jump into it. All right, we've got everything chipped up. And it is easier to chip it up and break it up as nice and fine as you can before you put the alcohol in. Once you put the alcohol in, you'll notice you won't be able to see it because it starts smoking like crazy here. It's like a science project. And you don't wanna be banging this around and splashing yourself in the eye with it either. So it is extremely cold, we just kinda mix it up. This is the funnest part. Now, take our little scooper. I'm gonna scoop this up and just start dumping it into the floor pan. Maybe work a couple feet at a time. Don't bite off more than you can chew. 
You don't really need to rush as much as you think you do. Biggest thing is getting it to set on there nice and flat. There we go. Now, it gets hard to see in here. <laughs> That's why I like to work in small sections. So you just let that sit there for 30 seconds or so, and what it's doing is it's freezing that tar-based material to where it gets rock hard, and then we will just chip it right out. If you were to compare how long this would take with heat, you would have hundreds of hours of trying to remove this from front to back versus literally minutes. This cuts down your time drastically, and even then you're left with a clean material of metal versus having a bunch of areas with tar stuck all over it. Depending on how well it's prepped, sometimes you'll actually hear the dynamat pop, but it does take a few seconds for it to truly become effective. If you start doing it too soon, you will notice that it just doesn't work. You have to wait till it's completely frozen. There you go. Now, because this is layered, notice how it, the tar come right off of it. So we'll take the dry ice and we'll put it back over this area. Let it continue to work. Because you need to get the tar-based material out. Even though if you're taking this to an acid dipper, they say it'll still take it out, but it's probably gonna take them a hell of a lot longer and then they're gonna charge you more money to do it. There we go. You kinda just have to have an area that you can get to the floor. And once you get to the floor, it just comes right out. I think the beginning is probably the hardest part, just to find yourself a little hole to get into it. Now that we have a hole that we've already froze and we've chipped away at a little spot, you can take that spot and come in here and just pick away work out from your spot. And what you're left with is the Dynamat tar-based material frozen and chips out. Here, you can see it's all just the paint. That's not the tar-based material. Try your best not to gouge up the metal and just keep working small sections. And if you're asking yourself, why are we removing the Dynamat before, because this car is going to go to acid dip, it's because the aluminum, acid dipping does not like aluminum. It actually has a chemical reaction in their tank and it completely contaminates the process. So we have to get at a minimum, the aluminum sheathing completely removed. The whole reason that we're doing this versus say removing it this way and sandblasting is because there's excessive undercoating on this car throughout the top, the bottom, and we have to acid dip it to make sure we get everything completely clean. So that is the reason why we are doing this. Hopefully this helps you with your project. So that's how you get the Dynamat out of your car. But let's talk about the
project as a whole, where are we at? What have we done? We spent the last two days stripping and documenting, bagging and tagging every bit of the parts. We went through, we've removed all the body panels, the doors, the interior. We got the whole front clip removed. We've already removed half of the body mounts. So we're gonna jack this thing up because it's an X-frame, get up underneath it, get the center ones removed. And once we have the Dynamat out, the body can then come off. We've already removed anything up here in the firewall and then we can separate the two. We can get this thing on the cart that's gonna go up to Oregon to get dipped and then the chassis can do what it's gonna do. So make sure as you're going through your process, for example, on this car, we're not using this chassis and this drivetrain, but I'm making sure as we pull things apart, we're documenting, taking pictures, pull something off, take another picture. And as you get down into it, because you never know if it's those one or two bolts that were missing or how a window regulator sat, you wanna have some kind of a reference that you can go back to in that file and be able to put the car back together after you're completely done restoring the car. So maybe you're not gonna use the chassis, but you might find that there was something that was off. You kinda of have to play investigator on why the car doesn't fit the way it does and what happened in the beginning. So always document, always bag and tag everything. This thing gets picked up on Monday. It's probably gonna be gone for a couple of weeks getting cleaned up and dipped. Once it returns, we'll basically show you what we uncovered underneath what looks like a straight body. So we'll show you the good, the bad, the ugly, and then we'll go over what the process is gonna be to make sure this thing is sealed up before any kind of flash rusting starts. So please subscribe, hit the like button. It does help us help you. We'll see you on the next one. It's like a science project.